Hey all, M. Kosler here, and once again this is a Prog Reborn, my progression style playthrough of Final Fantasy XIV. If you somehow ended up on this video and don't know what a progression style playthrough is, I'll drop a link to my introductory video on the concept right now, so pause this and go watch that for some more context. I just finished my playthrough of patch 2.1 and wanted to start doing these reflection videos talking about my general thoughts on the patch as well as let you know what I plan to require in the next patch. The video has chapters, so if you just want to know what's coming up, you can skip right to what's next. Patch 2.0 is good. It's certainly not as polished as later major releases, but when taken without the weight of expectation, it contains a compelling narrative and provides significant setup for adventures to come. If there's one thing this experiment has taught me, it's that I should take each individual patch release at face value. So much expectation is placed on the later parts of the MSQ that you might feel pressured to push through the consensus bad parts to get to the good parts, but with a little patience, there's gold all around. I want to expand on some of these in later videos, so I'll only give one example. But the botanist guildmaster, Fufucha, struggles with balancing her pacifist stance with her contribution to the war against the Ixal, and it parallels many different complex feelings I have on employment and consumption. And I would never have taken the time to read through the damn botanist guild questline if I didn't explicitly stop and smell the literal roses. Even with the weight of expectation, there's so much extra nuance you get on a second playthrough, and the world feels so much more vibrant and lived in. So many minor characters are introduced and reused later on. Lord Francel is a little lordling caught up in a Dravanian plot, later to become a central figure in the Ishgardian restoration efforts. Emitra is your summoner trainer, and becomes key to rescuing her sister Ishtola from the livestream. The Coco brothers are your thaumaturgy trainers, and are a major contributor to your final assault on Alamigo. You see constant references to the students of Baldessian before you've even met Grahatia or Kryl. On the lighter side, all the Old On citizens of the Gold Saucer are nice little easter eggs. The writers don't feel the need to throw out the old with every expansion. I'll not go so far as to say everything was planned from the beginning. Estinian is your rival and on the lamb from the Ishgardians after stealing the Eye of Nidhogg only to go relatively unpunished and become your de facto guide right at the start of Heavensward, but they all leave these neat little hooks to extend off of. So even as you step from new nation to new continent to new world, it doesn't feel entirely foreign. I won't recap all the story beats, but it's important to know exactly where we leave off at the end of patch 2.0. Eorzea is relatively stable. It has just excised a major Garlean threat, the ultimate weapon, from its shores, and presumably killed off the entire leadership class of the 14th Imperial Legion. You learn more about the Asians and catch a few glimpses of their machinations to come, but it's all very vague. The MSQ feels mostly self-contained. The Asian threat at this point isn't that interesting, because there isn't much characterization behind them besides being spooky bad guys. For the raid story, you and Alizé have begun investigating the roar that emanated from the shards of Dalamud and saw what appeared to be Louis Swa somehow alive and well. More frighteningly, you both see the massive head of the Prime of Bahamut regenerating with the help of Alligan technology. The raid story to me is the far greater reason to keep invested with the game coming out of patch 2.0. What do I plan to do for my 2.1 checklist? Besides obviously continuing the MSQ, the Crystal Tower Alliance Raid quest starts with the Labyrinth of the Ancients, introduced here. As well, we get our first look at the wacky adventures of Hildebrand and Manderville. The first two tribal reputation grinds were added in Patch 2.1, the Sylphs and the Amalja, so we're going to hit max rank with them. Housing was added, so depending on funds, I'll see if I can purchase a small plot for my free company. I don't normally do treasure hunts on my main, so I'd like to experience some treasure hunts in ARR. And that's about it. As an aside, PvP was technically introduced in Patch 2.1, but the only mode was the Wolves' Den, the basic World of Warcraft arena-esque mode, 
that doesn't actually exist in the game anymore. So we're going to skip doing PvP for now. As always, if you wouldn't mind giving a like to my content, I'd be extremely appreciative. And I stream 99% of this playthrough right here on YouTube. So if you'd like to know when I go live, please subscribe to the channel. You can also join our A Prog Reborn community discord, linked in the description below to get those go live notifications. Thank you so much for the already wonderful reception, and I'll see you in patch 2.1.